Hey there. Well, after much deliberation and giving uh, some thought to how I do my videos, I think I'm going to change my format. I'm not going to do play-by-plays because I find it very hard to make the video and play the game at the same time. The other issue is the length of the videos and the amount of time it takes to run it through Movie Maker and then upload it to YouTube. I don't have the fastest service in the world and it takes, you know, several hours of my time waiting for it to uh, upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of copy uh, another YouTuber's uh, format and that would be Gilbert Collins, I think it is. He's, uh, he does some excellent videos, which are mostly kind of a show and tell. He'll show you the, video, uh, the components of the game and run over some of the rules and just kind of give you an overview of the game. It's not really a out of the box kind of a thing or anything like that, but he just shows you a game, um, stuff like that. I'm going to try it and do that but I'm also going to try and show you how the various systems work uh, how the sequence of play goes how you know I'm going to go over the components first then go through the sequence of play and then probably move you know do the movement combat any other type of special um, systems that the game has and just give you a feel of how the game plays but I am not going to probably well I'm not going to play the game out before you um, because I just, you know, it's just not something I want to do anymore, and I'm not very good at it, so I'm going to try and stick with something that I think I can handle and still put out a semi-watchable uh, video. So in this case, I'm going to start with just a quick component overview, since I've already shown a few things in the intro video, and then I'm just going to show you a little bit about movement, combat, and that type of thing so you can consider this a sequel to the first one you can watch it if you want or we can move on to something else but I'm gonna go ahead and just do this and quickly and that's kinda of how I'm gonna try to do things in the future I'm not that big on you know shrink wrap break the shrink wrap look at the game I'm not too big on uh, you know the out-of-the-box kind of a thing or ooh, look what I got I'll do some of that to a point, but I'll let others who are more qualified do that to the newer games. I'm going to try and cover the older games. Uh, so anyway, that's my goal and plan, so I'm going to get started. See ya. Okay, the rule book clocks in at 16 pages. The paper is a matte finish, and uh, it's filled with illustrations. So I don't get my hand in the viewfinder again. I like I said, it's filled with the uh, illustrations. It doesn't have a lot of examples of play, but it covers most of the basic stuff. There is some artwork, which I'm really not that crazy about, but you know, to each his own. And it covers such things as movement, attacks, range. Oh. Um, reaction fire. Uh, let's see, other things like missiles, attacker results, or attack results. You can have morale, spotting. It also has limited visibility, entrenchments. There's artillery rolls and artillery patterns based upon the type of artillery that you're firing. Let's see, it even has Toyota trucks. If uh, Some of the scenarios include, uh, what were they called back then? Territorials, something like that. Anyway, uh, the Libyan Chad um, conflicts used a lot of those. Then we have chemical warfare. What else do we have? There's a section on air warfare. Uh, air units, sorry, I make y'all sick here. Uh, from fixed wing to rotor we have uh, like I said different types of combat we have fighter bombers as targets we have ground fire there's even air to air or anti-air 
and shoulder fired. We have helicopters as targets, you know, so on and so forth. And that's pretty much it for the basic rules. You can add optional rules such as cohesion, command control, limited ammo. Sorry, fingers in the way again. <clears throat> the viewfinder and the camera are just right there where you want to grab that edge and it's like, you know, got to pay attention. Okay, we have fighter bomber, air-to-air -air combat, optional artillery rules. We have smoke and there's some special vehicles. And then you can do a design your own scenario, which gives you the design rule. your own scenarios, which give you rules to, uh, like I say, make your own game. And then we come to the end here. You can even do a campaign. There's campaign rules. I can get over to them. That uh, lets you link the maps together to kind of create a campaign. Uh, some victory conditions, new units. On this page over here, you have units which are not necessarily shown in the game or come with the game, but you can kind of make them up yourself. Um, using these stats and stuff and they follow the same format as the counters in the game itself so and that's pretty much that the last page has charts and graphs tables whatever and like I was saying in well I don't know if I said it or not but even odds at one to three there's still a uh, what is it 16, 30 some, 33 percent chance of uh, a result of some sort. One to two and one to one. Pretty much a two to one attack is going to gain you, you know, a result of some sort with only a 16 percent chance of failure. Uh, we also have train effects, elevation, morale, that kind of thing like that. So the artillery patterns again, wind direction for chemicals. So <clears throat> that's a quick rundown on the rule book. Like I said, it's only 16 pages. There is a scenario book, and it's uh, a little bit larger. I'm not sure how many pages it runs, but it's the scenarios. It gives each scenario in the game. You can go from the Og Ogden War down to, like I played just a while back, the Grenada Conflict. So, India, Pakistan, Persian Gulf. You have kind of the, you know, it'll tell you the number of the scenario. It'll give you a little history uh, of the scenario. It'll tell you which maps, which direction to go. It gives you the objective, some conditions uh, before you play, some special rules that they suggest that you use. It gives you the length of the game. <clears throat> it gives you the forces, like you need a, and what they have. How many infantry companies, how many infantry platoons, any kind of fire support, their initial morale, where they set up. Then it gives you the other force, the attacker, which is Angola, same format. And it tells you how to win the scenario. So that's kind of how the entire scenario book is formatted. Um, it's pretty well laid out. I think some of the force structures are a little... Force structure versus the... Uh, winning conditions I don't know it's pretty tough and it has the same exact charts and tables on the back so anyway that's pretty much it for the robot. okay this is uh, kind of the counter symbology and what your counters look like the information found on them I've just put actual game counters over the illustration uh, of the different types uh, missile and gun you can see they have uh, missile attack factors missile range gun range, defense, uh, the defense is basically the type of, oh that's actually the defense rating, whatever, um, you have your gun attack factor, ID, you know, you can read all this, and then we have missile units, which pretty much just have a missile attack factor, which is in the yellow box, missile zoom in, right, in this case it's a 10 with a range of 10, has a defense of a 3, it's a troop unit basically and a movement factor of one which is restricted meaning it cannot uh, fire and move back up to the missile and gun 
it has a, the missile attack value and the range just like the missile only unit it also has the gun attack and the gun range number the three and the two the defense is the one I'm sorry it also has a troop carrying capacity of one um, different vehicles have different troop carrying capacities and different types of uh, units or whatever that they can move like some can move to towed guns stuff like that and it also has uh, different symbology in its movement factor it's amphibious and it has a movement factor of five and I think it's restricted in the ability to use the missile attack and the gun attack at the same time and we come down here to basically a gun only unit which just has the basic infantry are like this too they have a gun attack factor a range and a defense <clears throat> Excuse me. They have a silhouette denoting the unit type, and then they have a movement factor. So that's pretty much the standard thing. There's also fighter bombers. I think most of mine are still on the, the are still in punch. But this is kind of the information on them: strafing bomb, the silhouette, that type of thing. I think there's some errata about. Uh, which is air to air and which is the bombing value but anyway that's kind of an overview of the counters of the game we have three phases in a turn the first phase is the first attacks the next is move and enemy reaction fire it's kind of like opportunity fire and then we have the last attacks phase if you fire in the first attacks you cannot fire in the last attacks otherwise you can kind of fire and move or move and fire Reaction fire, you have to assume a firing position. You do so if you don't move. And that lets you do the uh, reaction fire. But only units in the firing position can do rapid, uh, reaction fire. Initiative, basically roll a die. Whoever has the highest die chooses to go first or second. And you can get that double turn thing if you go last and then go first. Let's see here. Let's look at movement here real quick. Movement is pretty standard. I didn't even take a look at the map. I really should have. We'll kind of take a look at the map once we uh, kind of look at movement. You got your various terrain costs, that kind of thing. Roads and trails help you move a little faster than the amphibious vehicles. You just cannot cross a river without being amphibious or having a bridge to cross them. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at the terrain. Terrain is pretty much standard GDW. Uh, I like it. It's very functional, but um, it's very clean too. You don't have to. There's very little ambiguity as to what's in each hex. Uh, it's not Simonson quality, but you know, to each his own. These are different elevations. You got the uh, trails or the dotted lines, the solid lines or roads. We've got towns or villages. Each one is <clears throat> different. Like in the, um, it was like playing last. Not Grenada, but the last one I was playing was uh, whatever it is. Oh, uh, the yeah, it was Grenada. This is the compound. Uh, instead of a town, it's basically just a uh, military compound that the Cubans took over and fortified. But anyway, we're just going to show a real quick example of movement. Like I say, uh, right here is your movement factor. Usually it's a 1 for troop units. It has a attack factor of a 2 and a range of only 1. And it has a defense of 3. Clear terrain costs 1. Uh, troop units have no facing, so you don't really have to worry about that. Vehicle units do have a facing. I can find my BMP again. <clears throat> or something like it. Uh, this is the air defense unit, the ZSU. They have to face a hex side. But let's uh, let's go ahead and move the infantry just to give you an idea of movement. It can move one hex. Well, this is going to be a, a real hard one. There, it moved one hex. The BMP can change its facing. I think it's free. We're going to go up a slope. It has a movement factor of 5. I think that's a 5. It's also restricted in its ability to fire and move. And that would be 2. 
Uh, let's turn it around. I think it just costs from hex to hex. I could be wrong. Three, four, and then five. And I think it can change its facing back around to here. Uh, this is the front. These three hexes are the front. These are the rear or flank. And they play an important... <sighs> sorry for the finger. They play an important role in the defense of the unit. Rather, it's attacked from the front or the flank. I'm going to give a quick... Uh, demonstration of combat here real quick okay as I said before each unit has a either a gun or a missile some have both um, units attack separately in this game like uh, if I had three infantry well each one could fire separately against the uh, ZSU unit and uh, vice versa you could have you know four or five units in a hex and you can still wait each unit can only attack separately, one at a time. Uh, doesn't appear to be any kind of penalty for stacking when uh, fire's coming in. You just roll randomly for the type of unit that you're going to be hitting, and then you use the appropriate factor. So, you know, that's kind of how that works. Uh, let's see what else we have. There is a range attenuation, kind of. Anybody plays Panzer Blitz will kind of be familiar with that. Range effects. Close range is half or less. You get to double your attack. Uh, let's see focus. Equal or less is just normal. Twice or less is half. That kind of thing. Uh, there's your facing diagram. The front versus the flank. There are certain rules for missiles. Uh, they... Can't, they don't have range attenuation or range effects. They're halved against uh, what? They have no effect against troops. They're halved in the woods and uh, well, woods. Okay, but that's not the point. The point is how to attack. What you'll do is let's see if I get a focus here. Oh, this is much better than my old camera. We'll do the ZSU since it has a range of four. Uh, it's within half, so it basically becomes a four uh, your two becomes a four so it would fire on the infantry unit at four to three there are no terrain modifiers there's no entrenchments anything like that so you're looking at basically a one to one so what you would do basically oops you want to roll it in the uh, dice rolling device so I roll a six, one to one. I'm gonna tell you right now that's a miss. Looking at the combat table, sorry, one to one. What do I got? Six, one to one is gonna be a miss. So its fire is ineffective against the infantry unit. Um, the infantry unit is out of range to fire at it during its turn, the infantry unit's turn it would have to move closer so anyway that's just kind of a brief example of combat that would be let's say that was the uh, ZSU's first attack um, it could still move let's say I, I kind of did it out of order sorry I would have moved it I was just showing you movement by the SOP instead of showing you movement or I was showing you movement by the way they put in the uh, rule book and not by the SOP so what you would have basically is you would have the first fire attack let's say that was the first fire attack and then it could move it could do its little five move whatever five movement points and let's say it moves up there now it could fire its it could not fire again in the final attack phase <clears throat> because it already fired once but let's say it didn't fire once and it went ahead and moved up to there they can also enter the enemy hex too but only the unit that starts in that hex uh, gets the benefit of the terrain. And vehicle units, they have flank. If they enter the same hex, you're considered shooting at their flank. Uh, based upon the... Uh, I know I'm just kind of doing a stream of consciousness type thing here. Uh, like the ZSU has a defense of one. Based upon that kind of defense... 
number like a one or a two, something like that. It has a, a flank of one and then a frontal facing of its normal uh, defense of one. So it's kind of pointless to engage in <clears throat> close combat with it. But anyway, the only benefit is its increased attack factor. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it for movement. It's pretty standard like most war games. Uh, the only other thing really that makes things different, um, let's see the results. <clears throat> that doesn't make it different, but oops, finger again. You have results of destroyed. Anytime on the uh, combat results table that you get an X, it only it affects both uh, targets. Then you can see that there's X's, D's, and P's. And as you can tell here, damage is the D is only for vehicles, the P is only for pin, or troop units, sorry. So if I attack at two to one, there's two chance there are P's that I can pin the unit. There's three, 50% uh, chance that I can eliminate it. Or if it's a vehicle, there's only a 16% chance of damaging it, but there's still that 50% chance of destroying it. So that's kind of that. These are just the markers that you uh, assign to the unit to kind of show you the status of the unit. Um, and then we go to the special rules, which basically just talk about entrenchments and how they work. They add to the add to the defense of a unit uh, by giving a plus four. There's tank traps, there's mines, kind of your standard stuff. I'm not going to go much more into it. <clears throat> you can use your imagination on how most other things work. So, air units, I think they can fight, uh, I don't know if they can fight uh, each other. I don't know how they represent air superiority. Um, but anyway, you got transport capability. Like uh, down here with this CH-47, the four is its ability to hold that many squads, and it has a defense strength against uh, both air to, uh, against air to air, I guess, of a three. So, anyway, that's pretty much the game in a nutshell. Uh, it's tactical, but not too detailed. It's okay. I like to dig it out once in a while, but then I. I get frustrated by it because some of the rules just they're not covered enough I guess um, the rules are very terse in some ways and you kind of have to use uh, common sense that type of thing to figure them out but anyway that's the uh, first battle system I think this was like the second or third game that came out second maybe there was uh, Team Yankee Test of Battle there was Battleground Europe uh let's see. I don't know if we can see it up here, but there's Blood and Thunder kind of in the center there. And they also put out a larger game, uh, the Battle of Moscow, on the road to Moscow, kind of a game that used a similar system. But otherwise, this is kind of test of arms. Just a couple of examples of movement and combat. So... I'm going to pick another game and see if I can't improve my cinema photography here and try to put out a series of videos kind of based on this uh, format, but perhaps with a little bit more detail and stuff. Anyway, I'll stop taking up your time and you can get back to whatever it was you were doing. Until later, see ya.